so who do we have here? I'm Adam Sebrin. Hi, Adam. And I'm with Roland DGA. DGA, Digital Graphics. Of the Americas. Ah, there you go. And, and uh, our corporate offices are located in Irvine, California. Lovely, Irvine. Yes, and our machines and equipment are made in Hamamatsu, Japan. Hamamatsu. Oh. Where's that? Northern? Southern? I don't. I don't know where Hamamatsu Southern is. Japan. That is two and a half hours south of Tokyo by public train oh. along the eastern coast. You've been there, I see. Watch it. Okay. It's very pretty. It's known for its unagi. Unagi, yes. It's also known for the quality of its wood, oh. which is why Hamamatsu is the center of musical instruments in Japan. Center of what? Of musical instruments. Really? Yes, what kind of instruments? Uh, well, originally uh, stringed instruments that needed wood. The wood was supposed to have a great resonance. Huh, interesting. So Roland started as a musical company and then branched off into other really? things. Really? Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, cool. Sorry, I know all the useless facts. He knows no, all the important no, no. stuff. I love. Okay, so uh, you want to tell me about the machines we have here? Sure. Do a demo or something? This is the MDX 540, which is a four axis milling center. Right. Okay. And tell me what that is, because somebody who's looking at this video just might not know. Well, we have uh, three axis motion X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z going mm -hmm. up and down. Mm -hmm. And then this device on the inside here. Oops. Uh oh. It's okay. Here you go, Tony. Oh no, it broke. Oh. <laughs> it broke off. This, it, it didn't break. This device is called the fourth axis, uh -huh. which rotates the part uh, around where you can work on different sides of I it. I see. I so see. this is fourth axis. The machine is three axis. I see, I see. On this side of the machine, we have an automatic tool changer uh -huh. where the machine comes down and picks up the tool that it needs to does do. Does the, the machining job. process, uh -huh. then returns the tool, picks up the next there. tool. I see, so there's your row of tools right there. Okay. Now, these okay. machines are used uh, most significantly for rapid prototyping, mm -hmm. where we start with a block of material and we mill it down into a final part. I see. Okay. And right now, I, is it soap I'm smelling? This is wax. Wax. This it's is very, wax. Uh, very fragrant. You could <laughs> machine wax if you wanted. The beauty uh -huh. of this type of uh, rapid prototyping method uh -huh. is that you can use all kinds of different materials. Okay, so, so let's see what you got. From aluminum. Wow. There's really? more of the wax. This is nice, very lightweight. Huh? Yeah, there's a wonderful part. Oh, wow, cool. Nice. And you can use all kinds of mechanical plastics. This is made out of Delrin. 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 Delrin, okay. yeah. Huh. You can machine uh, Teflon, nylon. Now it made this in two, right? Two, two halves. You snapped, yes. you snapped it together. It's actually okay. multiple parts. Oh, okay. Each each of the black pieces is a separate part. Uh -huh. This is milled in two halves. You see the split? Yes. And then uh, this is uh, in two pieces. Very clean, though, huh? So typically, this is what you would. You, this is the solid. Okay. And this is half of it. Is this one wax? Uh, this is a wax. Plastic. This is wax. Yeah. It feels pretty solid. And huh? this one is made out of uh, Delrin or ABS. Oh, is that what Delrin is? No, ABS is a different. different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. ABS plastic. I've been uh, looking at a lot of 3D printers. You know, the maker uh, level of 3D printers, and uh, they build up. But these are nice. Very smooth. Very uh, nice detail. Well, there's there's three uh, significant benefits mm -hmm. for subtractive rapid prototyping over the additive. Right. One of them is the fit form and finish that you just mentioned. Right. The parts come out very smooth and very, you know, they fit together in the real world. Mm -hmm. So that's part one. Part two is the, the, the variable of being able to work in so many different types of material. Hmm. And then finally, the third thing is the, the, uh, the cost of ownership. The machines are typically less expensive at the front end and definitely less expensive on the back end. You don't have the service agreements and the expense of the proprietary 
materials that are needed in the 3D printer. Uh, okay. Oh, right. Cause that makes sense. You can take some foam. Is this foam? Or is That's this wood? wood? That's wood. But you could take a foam thing and do it with that, right? Sure. Okay, cool. And then, like, how much is the machine? These, these start at $22,000 uh -huh. and go up to about forty. Okay. But I also have an introductory level machine over uh -huh. here. Okay. The MDX40. Right. And this one's $79.95, so $8,000. And it has a fourth axis that can be added to it. And that adds about thirty five hundred. Okay, so about ten thousand, eleven thousand for the dollars. for the similar functionality, just a slightly smaller footprint. Smaller footprint, uh -huh. twelve by twelve active area, where right. this is nineteen by fourteen. Right. And this does not have automatic tool changing. Ah. Uh. And it's limited to all of your mechanical plastics, wood, acrylic, no no non ferrous metal. That one will do the non-ferrous metal. I see. So you can't do the aluminum on this one? On this one. Um, but still, that's pretty good functionality. Yeah, for that kind of money, yeah. you'll see this a lot in educational institutions. Mm -hmm. You'll see it a lot in laboratories where the engineer just wants to knock out a quick prototype. <laughs> you see it at homes where people just want to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> And they have the pockets to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to have a bit of a deeper pocket than mine. <laughs> yeah. And then over here... to run uh -huh. one of these mills, mm -hmm. you have to take the STL file or the geometry file mm -hmm. and apply a toolpath to it called CAM, yes. Computer Aided Machining mm -hmm. or Manufacturing. And um, usually the engineer or the student doesn't know anything about machining or CAM. Right. So we created a piece of software called SRP Player. Mm. An SRP Player allows you to import that STL and go through a little wizard of five steps, one at a time, just answering English questions. Mm -hmm. And at the end, you click on output, and the machine starts. Hmm. So they don't have to know how to do CAM. Wow. We pretty much did it for them. Interesting. Well, that's cool. Very good. SRP Thanks. player. SRP player. And that comes if you buy any of the machines, it comes yes. with it. OK. It Great. Thank you so much. This is the Roland MDX 540 in action. He's doing laps right now. I want to see it turn it. Oh, it's doing it layer by layer. I see. I'm going to shut off till we get closer to seeing this stuff. Shaping. the shape now.
recently used motorcycle Oh yeah? For what? Yeah. This is the opposite of the free Have you seen American Chopper? No. Okay, well they take metal and just put it in and make their rim with 3D printing and build it out. Out of one of these? Wow. Yeah, but a bigger version and then they use the water and to help cool the metal. And is, do they make it in aluminum? Yeah, I remember it, right. yeah. Yeah, because he was saying this works with aluminum, but... Yeah, what was your question? Uh, oh, I was just saying it's, it's basically the same machine that the Orange County Trapper guys and others going to use. Because they just put a block in the TV shows. Yeah, they do a... Uh, right, it's, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yes. What What is it making? It's making that little mouse. Oh, uh, okay. That's one of the oh. attendees' files. This? Yeah. Oh, okay. Some attendee modeled that. Oh, I see. That's what we're here for. Oh, cool. I see. I can see the, the shape coming out. That's inside the two ears.